This is a video of the Database Cloud Services Workshop setup. This is the self-guided version, and as such, it needs uh, some steps to set up the account. We also offer an instructor-led version, which has all the environment uh, set up for you in advance. So this, this um, video walks through the setup process for those wanting to run the workshop on their own in a self-guided fashion. When you first access the instructions, you're going to come to this site and it's going to just notify you that we do have in this particular workshop two versions, the instructor version and the self-guided version. It's just a notification. And then once you go here, you'll have to make a change to the instructor led and select the self-guided version. And the self-guided version makes a slight change. You'll see in the drop down list setup steps for the self guided labs. And it's the setup steps that I'll be walking through today. Once you've done that, you can proceed on to lab 100, lab 200, 300, and 400. So let's go on to the setup steps themselves. And the first thing you need to do is to log into the cloud console and create a DBCS workshop image. You're going to go to cloud.oracle.com. You're going to log in. And when you log in, you've got a couple of different options depending on what type of account you've got. When you sign in, you'll come to this screen. It asks you to select your account type and you've either got cloud account with identity cloud service or a traditional cloud account. Uh, today, I'm using the traditional account uh, cloud account. I will select that. And I'm also using a US data center. The information on which data center you're assigned to will be, uh, will be provided when you secure your services through the trial accounts or through your uh, organization's uh, cloud account. So I'm going to use the US account. I'm going to go to my services. And in my services, I'm using identity domain 11358. And since I and I'm going to log in here, I'm using the cloud.admin account. And my password. And when you arrive, you're going to come to this uh, particular screen. Uh, we're going to customize our dashboard. And what we need to do is to make sure that we can see the database service. The ones that are showing up are ones that, are, that have been used or have services in them. That's why you see the compute one. Today, uh, we're going to use the database one. And we're going to go into the database, select the database service. And you're going to open the service console. And you can see here now that we're going to create an instance. Select Create Instance. We're going to call this one Workshop Instance, Workshop Image. We don't really need a description. The other key field is to select the software release. It's important to select Oracle Database Release 2. The rest you can leave as is. We do need to put in the password and we're going to standardize on this um, because we've got secure access through our keys, which I'll show you shortly. And at this point, you're going to select edit for the SSH public key. And we're going to create a new key. Once we've downloaded it, we will go to backup destination. We're just going to pick cloud storage only. And for the storage container, let's give it a unique name. We'll call it Oracle-data-storage. 
dash one username is cloud.admin and the password is and we'll type in the password. I encourage you to copy and paste uh, into a notepad your passwords and your and your um, identity domain. And at this point, you can check the create cloud storage container. I've already done that, but you will be checking that. That's important. And at that point, you can just hit next. And create. This is going to take about 30 minutes. So when I come back after 30 minutes, your instance will be up and we'll, we'll start configuring it. In the meantime, you'll see the message here, status, creating instance. And you can always go there to see what's happening. There's also the activity up here. Activity gives you a status of the various steps that to the uh, cloud service is performing to make this available. And you can see the steps down here, activity, activity submitted, activity started. In the meantime, we're going to download a couple of things from the internet that will be used when we do the configuration on the instance. I'll go to my other uh, browser and I would like to suggest you open up the documentation doc uh, so that you can cut and paste the URLs and some other things that make make it a little bit easier to navigate through the setup steps. So we're going to go download the Oracle Backup module and the Oracle, uh, Adobe Yum repository. So first of all, let's go to uh, let's go to the Oracle website to download the backup module. I'm going to copy that URL there. I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to enter the URL in this and we'll download this and this is just going to prompt me briefly to accept the license which i will do you can read the license terms and we're going to go to all supported platforms and it's going to have me sign in and let's let's log in it's going to save the file. I've been saving it to workshops. So we'll do that. And that should be fine. Let's go back to the workshop steps. Scroll down. And let's go to the Adobe site to download the repository. Copy that URL there. Again, we'll go back to here, paste it into a new tab. And in this case, we're downloading from Windows. I just want to point out that we're actually going to be installing into our platform, our workshop image Linux platform. So you need to select need a flash pair for a different computer. Not a problem to download Linux while you're on Windows, the operating system. Is Linux 64 bit and the version is yum and we're going to download that as well. Save file. And again we'll go to the workshops directory and we'll save it there. And that should be it. So we'll go back to the database console. And we're going to get the works, uh, the workshop image IP address. I should point out that the documentation I put together was done through a couple of sessions with different IPs. So when I mention an IP address, this particular number down here, you'll see some inconsistencies. But just be aware that I've called this the workshop image, and that's the image IP I'm talking about. It's this one right here. So let's get that IP address right there. And I will actually, in fact, copy that. And I'll be putting it into my WordPad so that I can easily paste it when I go to other documentation. Now, one thing is with the, the keys that I generated, 
uh, I need to convert the key, the keys that are created by default work for Linux, they don't work for Windows. I need to just make a modification and convert that key into like a, a Windows PPK key. So let's import that key. Now, first you would have to have extracted it. It gets downloaded as a zip file. I've, I've already done that. So when you go to go to import key, I'll go to my workshops directory. It's this SSH key bundle that you downloaded and I've extracted it and it creates a public key and a private key. And so I need to be connecting uh, to the instance. I'm gonna select the private key and I'm going to save private key. And it just says yes without a passphrase, that's fine. And now it's going to be called private key dot ppk. Save that and we're done. Now the next step, looking at the lab, um, the documentation, copy files to the workshop image. And this is going to involve using WinSCP. Again, that's a program that you can get on the internet. Okay, we're going to walk, uh, log into PuTTY, using PuTTY into the workshop image, the remote workshop image. And we've got the IP address saved here already. And we just need to go down to SSH. We've got to go down to authentication. We're going to use the private key that um, we saved already. And it's this one here. Open. And we're going to log in as OPC in this case. And we're logged in remotely. Now we're going to switch uh, to my work, uh, the documentation. And let's just go straight there. Install scripts. And we're going to, we're going to run these as a, as a set. You can just simply highlight them all. Uh, hit it, select copy, go to your window here and execute them, which will take a little while. Now that we have run the install script, we can start the VNC server. You can set the geometry by uh, specifying the screen size. Uh, I'm going to leave it as the default, so I'll just have to log in as Oracle. And just type in VNC server. We'll put it to port one. And I've copied the password from my desktop uh, notepad. And so you should be, should be good to log into VNC, but you just have to, at this point, the next step would be to open the VNC port 5901. We're going to go back to the desktop or the um, cloud console, and we need to open the VNC port. So go into access roles. And we're going to create a new role. I'll just call it open 50, uh, 5901. Source is going to be the internet. Destination is going to be database. Uh, you might see it just say DB instead of DB underscore one. It depends if you've created databases previously in this uh, particular um, account. So, and destination port is 5901. And it's as simple as that. It only takes a few seconds to to create and open uh, the port through this uh, open 5901 rule and we're going to log in with our workshop image ip address and it's on port 5901 short for uh, i can use the shortcut one and let's let's connect 
it's going to ask me for the password. So I believe I can paste in. So there you have it. Um, there's just a couple of final things that need to be done. One of the first things you have to do fairly quickly is go into System Preferences, Screensaver, and disable the Activate Screensaver when computer's idle. We do that so that it doesn't screen lock up and prompt you for the for the password. We're using keys, so that wouldn't work. So I'll close that. And now the last step, which is to put a SQL developer shortcut on the desktop. All you do is right click, create a launcher, and it's going to be called SQL developer. And the shortcut is actually in the documentation. It's right here. And I would just cut and paste this directly from the document to make it easier. Copy into here. And for the icon, it's a little bit different. We go to Go to file system and it's really under just U01, app, Oracle, product, 12.2, DB Home 1, SQL developer. You can sort this in descending order. It's right there. And the icon's actually right at the bottom. It's it there. Open it. Say OK. And we're going to double click on the SQL developer to start it up. I'm going to say no in this prompt. And once it starts, we can close this window. When it starts, connections, we're going to do an import connections. It's going to be picking up the SQL dev.xml file was part of the import file, set of files. And encryption key, we're just going to remove all the exported connections. OK, next and finish. And that's it. From here, you should be able to move on to Lab 100.